Hello lovely people, how are you all doing today? I do hope you're well. Um, gosh, you're joining me on a really, really dark day. The clouds have moved in. It's really, it's gloomy out there. It's not raining, but it's dark. And it's a bit of a wind today and there's a little bit of a chill on the wind. Hmm, season is changing. Anyway, yes, uh, another chatty video straight after the previous one. I don't normally do that. There's a particular reason I'm sitting in the chair today. I've got a few little things to catch you up on and then a little bit of announcement at the end. Um, so let's just dive in. I'm gonna try and keep this a bit short today and I've just looked at my little pile of things I want to show you and talk about today. Uh, and the first thing I've just realized I need space, I need to stand up. Do you remember when I was doing the flat tour video in the first one in the bathroom? There's some linens there that I mentioned and I said I want to show you a bit more closely. I'm gonna shove you all away in a second and stand up to show you more closely. But um, yeah, I've got these two pieces. Now my sister's mother-in-law, does that make her my mother-in-law-in-law? -in -law? <laughs> my sister's mother-in-law died at the end of last year. So my sister has been sort of going through all her bits and pieces, sorting and redistributing, which is so lovely. And she's passed a couple of bits on to me linens because she knows how I love a bit of an, a vintage linen so um yeah she gave them to me while we were on our auntie teapot trip and it was so lovely because we just sort of sat on the sofa uh I can't remember whether our I think our accommodation did have a tv and dvd player but we didn't have it on we just sort of sat in the quiet and went through all the, all the linens and just chatted and I was cooing over everything and just sort of having a really lovely time remembering her mother-in-law who I'd obviously I'd met on numerous occasions fantastic woman really really quite formidable proper proper Yorkshire lass took no nonsense from anyone including me uh, put me in my place quite a few times um, but yeah, so it was lovely to just sort of sit and chat and remember. And, you know, there we were on that trip that was ostensibly about collecting Auntie Teapot, but also the chance to have a really nice evening with my sister talking about her mother-in-law. So I went through the bits and pieces and these two pieces, we couldn't work out what they were, I'm, I'm gonna stand up in a second to show you, but width wise, so from here to here, and it's, is it linen? It might be linen. Oh, excuse my damp head, just wash my head. I haven't even, I haven't done a parting or anything yet. Um, I think it's linen, it's quite a fine linen. And there's this lovely deep, uh it's tatting i think it's tatting edge really pretty with a very slight pulled thread work edge of the border there but then down the middle i don't know if you can make that out there's a blooming great big seam right down the middle so we were sort of speculating we were wondering whether they were was it a tablecloth for a long kind of might even have been like a wedding reception or something tablecloth but they were just too wide and draping on the floor so cut them in the middle because obviously you, you can't hem them you can't take up a hem because then you lose all this um we don't know but i thought oh gosh what's that and then i had an idea but to show you my idea you're all gonna need to step back a bit so go on step back a bit give me some space that's better so what I'm thinking is, so for now, all I'm going to do with them is wash and press them because I'm going to put them away, store them for a while. And that might seem a bit silly. Why bother, you know, doing the washing and pressing? But I always do. Um, yes, they're going to get creased whilst they're being stored, but get them really thoroughly washed, really thoroughly dry, and then store them. Because I'm thinking in my next home 
because up here I don't have any window dressings, I don't have curtains, anything, because I'm so high up, no one's ever been able to look in, apart from now they've built those new flats over there. Uh, I'm going to need some curtains, window dressings, what have you. Now, because I'm intending to be in a ground floor flat, and around here, in terms of housing stock, it's almost certainly going to be a Victorian house or villa that's been converted. So it should have high ceilings, which in turn means long windows. So I thought, now you can see the width, can't you? That's kind of, it feels like that's gonna be the width of a sash window. So I can do one of a few things. Let me just, I'm gonna gather this side in, but imagine, it, or even two of them side by side, I'll have to make a, a little seam pocket in the top to hang it through. But the idea being that the, this is a kind of a window treatment. It's going to be so hard to show, but that in the... <laughs> so I need... Can someone give me another pair of hands, please? That somehow, like, in the daytime, for letting light in, I simply just scoop it back, like that. So that this lovely, pretty, tashing edge is visible. I think that's quite a nice idea. The other possibility is, depending on width, but I could always open up this seam in the middle, take some off and bring it back in. The other thing I could do is make um, a blind with it, just by sewing horizontal pockets in for the little metal strips, so that then it will, as a blind, pull it up, jump, 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 it gathers up. So we're still getting this gorgeous, pretty edge showing. Ah, we'll see. Right, let's just sit back down again. It's one of the things I love about vintage linens. Um, they, they just kind of spark your imagination. They're just begging to be saved and used somehow. Now, obviously, sometimes it might be something that's complete and just so immaculately perfect, like a tablecloth. You wouldn't do anything with it other than have it as a tablecloth. But quite often I do find pieces or I'm given pieces and you th I think to myself, hmm, <laughs> what am I gonna do with that? And then an idea will start to form and then once that idea starts to form, all sorts of other ideas start pinging off. Um, I don't know quite what's gonna happen with that. I don't quite know how it's gonna turn out. Of course, at some point, you will see, <laughs> you know, at some point next year when I've moved. And um, I think obviously the window dressings will be a priority just for privacy, but it might be a case that I just get some, any old curtains from a charity shop initially, just get something up so I've got the privacy. And then over time, I can go through all my lovely vintage linens and make something that's really perfect and gorgeous can't wait now speaking of she says reaching down vintage linens oh my goodness i have a huge thank you to say to karen in france this has originally come all the way from is it limousin she's written in the lid yes for all the way from limousin in france a bit of a palaver with the postage because we've been having strikes and then this was held at a depot and had to ring through to organise delivery to come right to me but of course they were all closed with the strikes but it's eventually here and it's beautiful. This was something that a friend of Karen's, she was clearing out a home, passed it on to Karen and Karen said would I like it for the shop and I said goodness me yes please didn't realize just how beautiful it was going to be until it arrived so this is going to go into the shop i'm not sure when and um i mean everything in the shop generates a bit of a donation to macmillan cancer care but this month september is the macmillan coffee morning um big campaign for sort of you know generating funds and of course next month is it called i think it's called stoptober no is it 
it's, no, I think it's called Go Sober for October, where you get sponsored by your friends to not drink. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a big push to raise funds for our fantastic Macmillan Cancer Nurses. I've spoken about them a little bit before. Um, our family has certainly had good use from Macmillan Cancer Nurses and I'm sure a great many of you have too. So because this is a donation, I'm literally, I, it will go in the shop. I haven't quite decided what to price it at yet. I will only take literally a couple of quid for my time. The rest of it is gonna go to Macmillan. And I think that's really fitting. So it's in its original box. You'd never guess from the lid. Very chinoisey, chinoiserie, isn't it? Um, and I don't think it's ever been used. It's got that feel of maybe it was a wedding gift because inside, you'll be able to see because of reflection, it's still got all its packaging. Now I haven't opened it properly to look because what I will do, normally when I sell vintage linens, I wash and press everything before I sell them. But I, I think this has never been touched. Yeah, I can feel it's never been touched. So I think I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. It's like a little time capsule. But let me show you exactly what it is. I will go through and check that there's no moth damage, etc, etc. But it is the most beautiful. It's French. It's not going to pick up on camera, I don't think. It's French damask. Um, oh, it's it's so, oh, there we go. You have to get the angle right. Can you see it's so pretty? Damask is so impossible to photograph for the shop, but it's, that's a napkin. It's a tablecloth and 10 napkins. And like I said, I don't think this has ever been out of the box. What a beautiful treasure. So thank you to Karen and thank you to Karen's friend who passed on to her. Gorgeous. Yeah, I will have to um, take it out in order to measure it because I don't know how huge the tablecloth is. Oh, it's beautiful. Jacquard. I love Jacquard. It's so subtle. Uh, damask. I'm saying Jacquard because it's done on a Jacquard loom. I, the thing I love about Damask, let's see if we can bend it in the light again so you can just see. It's really subtle. It, from a distance it looks completely plain, it's only when you're close that you can see it. And it's it's a very specific uh, textile. It's done on a jacquard mill. So I'm a good Lancashire girl, I know about my mill stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's done on a, on a jacquard loom, did I say mill? And we get the, the pattern comes from um, whether I've, I've now <laughs> having said I'm a good Lancashire mill girl. I can't remember the warp and the weft, the way round it is. It doesn't matter. But the it's where the threads are coming over and under, over and under. You get that slight relief so that where you have more threads on the top, they look, when you move them in the light, they, they appear slightly darker. So you see the pattern. I love it. I absolutely love Damask. Oh, so beautiful. What, what a treasure. Um, so that will be going into the shop at some point. I have to find the kind of the perfect sort of day to photograph it. Actually, today would probably be the kind of day because it's a bit, my cushion's bugging me. It's a bit overcast. So it's kind of like dark light. In other words, it's not bright, bright sunshine that would just wash it out. But yes, how fantastic. I've had some other lovely posts too. There's a couple of bits I want to show you. Um, so, um, in that last video, I was talking about the travel show that Griff Riss Jones is doing across Canada. And I was saying, you know, I'm really excited because we don't really get to see much about Canada. And, you know, having had friends there now, friends from the past, 
How bizarre then, because I filmed that video, I mean, you saw it a couple of days ago. I actually filmed it on the 1st of September. Um, so it was completely kind of like a serendipitous moment that uh, I'd got the video lined up to go live yesterday. In, it's my yesterday. It does get confusing. And just when I was about to say, you know, go live, I had a, I hadn't, how did it work out? I don't think I'd been downstairs at that stage that day. I'd gone downstairs. Anyway, there was post waiting for me and a lovely little parcel from Leslie. And the reason I'm mentioning it is because I folded it differently now. And let me show you how I opened the parcel. I sort of opened it like this. It's just weird how things work out, isn't it? Canada! So Leslie sent me this really lovely bit of fabric. I love graphic prints anyway. And it sort of reminds me of something. I'll tell you what it reminds me of in a sec, but let me just open it so you can see. It's fairly, it's about a metre or so wide. I'm going to have to disappear for a moment. Bye! <laughs> you see starting over in the west and the pacific and then all the way over to the east how great and it's that's how deep it is so it's about 60 centimeters deep no idea what i'm going to make with it leslie and no idea whatsoever i think it's almost like a, a sort of like half curtain i think oh Will I have a shed in my new place? It would be a great little shed curtain because it's so cheerful. Um, one could, I suppose, make it into a big cushion, the kind of cushion that you'd stuff behind you on the bed for sort of reading at night. Big floor cushion. I don't know. I don't know yet, but I love it. I love a graphic print. And what it reminded me of was, um, do you remember, I know some of you will, I don't know if they still make them, but when I was a kid, you could buy a piece of fabric and on it would be printed a sort of a rag doll. I sold something like it in my shop a couple of years ago. I really wanted to keep it for me, but it would look like a rag doll. The front of the rag doll, the back of the rag doll, or the front of the teddy, the back of the teddy. And it was usually on a sort of a white background and then the print of the ragdoll with dotted lines around it this is where you cut so you cut them out stitch them together turn them the right way out stuff them sew up that little hole voila instant little ragdoll it sort of reminded me of that i don't know why i think it's just that sort of yeah the graphic print i suppose one could sort of yeah like a big cushion but you could quilt all around each of the different territories fantastic i want to have it up somewhere because um i kind of i i always know that okay that's british columbia that's quebec that's newfoundland that's prince edward island i know those bits it's like across the middle it's like which order do they come in alberta and saskatchewan and manitoba is it manitoba that's the one i always forget manitoba oh i got them in the right order alberta saskatchewan and manitoba Ontario, of course, because of Lake Ontario. Anyway, so what a cute, what a what a cute surprise in the post. Thank you, Leslie. That was so lovely. And almost finally, not quite finally, another really cute parcel in the post. It came at, sort of like as a little tube and with a card attached. I want to make sure I'm not going to show, accidentally show anyone's address or anything. So I opened the card and as soon as I opened it, I was like, oh, it's home. So this, so anyone who's been watching my channel for a while, you have seen this in one of my videos. When I took the trip down to Dorset with my sister and cousin and his missus, this is the Mill Pond in Swanage. Uh, one of our favourite spots to, 
just have a sit in a quiet moment. And we've got a whole series of photographs of me and my sister sitting on the edge of the mill pond, right from when we were teeny tiny nippers to that last time we were there together, we took another photo in that spot. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, be still my beating heart. Because for me, you know, Dorset, it does feel like home. Put it this way, I have far, far, far more of an emotional attachment and pull to Dorset than I do to Lancashire. I was born in Lancashire, but Dorset for me, you know, it's my, it's my safe place, it's my special place, it's, it's just, it's a place where I just feel right in myself, comfortable in myself, all is well with the world. But what I loved is, this is so random, I love the random of this, thank you lovely, is the local newspaper, I think it's a free newspaper, isn't it? They're always free these days, aren't they? It's the Swanage and Wareham Advertiser. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I haven't even looked at this property yet, but historic um, Flying Scotsman to visit Purbeck. So Purbeck is a very specific part of Dorset. Dorset's a big county. I'm talking about a really, really tiny, very specific part called Purbeck. Um, oh, just to, th oh, the Flying Scotsman is going to visit Swanage Railway for almost three weeks in October from Wednesday the 19th of October to November the 6th. <laughs> Gonna have to go on a trip. Anyway, I can't, I haven't, like I said, I haven't looked at it yet. I know there's going to be adverts in there for things that are so familiar to me. There'll be an advert in there for Miles and Barr, which are the estate agents down there. Brilliant. So, the local newspaper. I mean, it's the silliest thing, isn't it? But honestly, sweetie, I, I kind of got a bit emotional when I opened the packet. I'm going to try not to get emotional now, but I did get... I felt myself tearing up. How, how daft. Um... And then this, which I don't know, it's it's obviously it's like a local, it's just been put together. It's, it's I was going to say magazine, it's not quite a magazine, it's just stapled on the edge, the dubber. But again, it's, um, it's all local news, local adverts. It'll be stuff that I'm familiar with, stuff that I'm not familiar with. Oh, I think it's like a parish newsletter, it looks like. Worth Matravers News, Kingston News, Harmon's Cross News, Langton Matravers News. That's the little the little quarrying villages up on the down. Um, my grandparents lived in Langton Matravers. <sighs> of course I've been looking at property down there. <laughs> I mean, it's just the prices. They're just silly. It's because it's a beautiful part of the world. There's a lot of second homing going on, lots of Airbnb buying, and I can't compete with the Airbnb buyers. Anyway, never mind. But the reason it was in that sausage shape... <laughs> stick a rock. So you remember when I had my trip with Auntie Teapot, I was having to describe what a stick of rock looks like because I pretty much scoffed it. This is a whole stick of rock. And I don't know if we'll pick up, do you remember I was saying it's it's nearly always a picture of the beach of that place. So that's Corfe Castle on the right. Oh, struggling to, there we go. And I'm sure many of you have visited Corfe Castle at some point in your lives. And this, this is Handfast Point, sort of at the end of Ballard Down. So I'm upside down, I can't work out my geography. So. If you were carrying on up the coast that way, you get to Swanage Bay. Carry on around it this way, you get to Stodland Bay. But that's the famous sort of stack of chalk, stacks of chalk where erosion has happened and left a stack and it's called Old Harry Rocks. Again, I'm sure many of you will. This is a beautiful walk from Swanage all the way around to Stodland. It's about three or four miles around the, uh, around the point if you're, if you're sturdy enough to get up there, 
well worth it, it's beautiful. And I have it written in my will that my ashes are to be scattered on Old Harry Rocks <laughs> with, with a full brass band playing Abide With Me. Because <laughs> if you write it in your will, they've got to do it, haven't they? <laughs> So thank you so much, lovely. I am going to, I'm going to enjoy indulging in my stick of rock. I was going to say over the next few days, but I think <laughs> it might be gone in a day. What beautiful, beautiful post. I mean, it's, from, you know, the, the tablecloth, gorgeous. A bit of Canada fabric. It's so kind of random, but such fun. And my bits from Swanage, oh, I'm going to read the Swanage news. Do you know what? I'm going to read the Swanage and Wareham newspaper advertiser whilst eating my stick of rock a bit later this afternoon. Now, just before I go, just quickly, a little wee announcement. <clears throat> I'm going to be going offline for a few days, a week or so. So there won't be any videos. Um, there won't be any Facebook activity, no Instagram activity. The shop is going to stay open. I know people often ask me to, to do a link. It's always under here where you see the title and there's a bit of writing and it says read more. If you click read more, a little whoop drops down and the link for the shop is there. So the shop is going to stay open. If anyone messages me via Facebook about the shop, if they've got a query, it will be answered. But otherwise, there won't be... Any messages on Facebook will be not answered. Um, emails won't be answered. <laughs> Basically, they'll be ignored. Sorry. Um, and when I do come back online, <clears throat> unlike in, in the past, if I've had a couple of days away, say with my sister or whatever, when I get home, I go backwards and deal with everything that's come in in my absence. That won't be happening. So yeah, any messages, emails, whatever that come in in the next few days, it's going to be like they disappear to the ether. They are not going to be attended to at all. Uh, there's nothing untoward going on. Um, I'm just going to be offline for a little while. And it's nothing to do with the Queen before anyone thinks I'm taking this morning to the next level. No, it's nothing to do with the Queen. It's just my own stuff. So yes, um, not sure when I'll be back. I will just say that in the meantime, I hope you all stay well and happy. Thanks for hanging out with me a little bit today. It's always a, <laughs> the thought police are coming. It's always a pleasure to have your company and thank you for putting up with my company. For now though, I don't know when I see you, but for now I'm just gonna say cheerio everyone. <laughs>